Muslims and Arabists often inform us that jihad means spiritual struggle. Is this true? The word jihad in the Arabic language has its root in jahada, which does mean struggle, endeavor, or strive. Unfortunately, those who explain it in spiritual terms are deliberately deceiving and misleading the public about, about its actual meaning based entirely upon the Arabic language of the Qur'an and the Hadith. In innumerable verses in the Qur'an and the Hadith, jihad means only one thing, physical warfare in the cause of Allah, which in Arabic it is jihad fi sabil Allah. Most human beings, whether followers of Muhammad or not, do not know that Muhammad unilaterally declared total and eternal war. 1400 years ago against all unsuspecting human beings who do not believe as he does. Contrary to all the falsified assertions by politically correct Westerners and aided and abetted by Muhammadans who have every reason to hide the truth, jihad is not a spiritual struggle for excellence, but a continuous war against all so-called unbelievers until all of humanity is either converted to Muhammadan Islam, is subject to it, or is slaughtered. In fact, among Muslim scholars, it constitutes the unwritten sixth pillar of Muhammadan Islam. The Quran and the Hadith are crystal clear in affirming this. The Quran and the Hadith contain hundreds of verses attesting to and asserting this dogma. Not once in the Quran can anyone find the word jihad mentioned by itself and meaning spiritual struggle. All the derivatives of the word jihad in the Quran and hadith represent acts of war and aggression to spread the belief in Allah and in Muhammad as the messenger of Allah. To be able to indoctrinate any human being, to be so prepared as to willingly die for a faith, thus becoming a martyr, shaheed, who would be rewarded with eternal sexual, sensual, and carnal pleasures in the afterlife than in life on earth, should be considered among the most diabolical weapons of war ever conceived. In such a war, very little mercy could be shown to the enemy until it is totally subdued, converted, or exterminated. This ideological weapon has been used throughout Islamic history both against the infidels as well as against other unbelieving sects of Islam. In all of the Quranic verses, as well as in the Ahadith, jihad is invariably associated with the physical warfare and fighting, and not as a spiritual striving for a higher morality and or discovery of self. In the tradition of Muhammadan Islam, the world is divided into two major parts. Number one, Dar es Salaam, which is the territory of peace. They comprise territories completely under the control of Muhammadan Muslims, Al Mu'minin, that is the believers, which is made up of two components. A, Dar al Islam, which is territories with a majority of Muslim peoples. B, Dar al Sulh, territories with a non Muhammadan majority occupied and under the protection of the Muslims. And the second part is Dar al Harb which is the territory of war. All territories in the world that are not under the control of Muhammadans are considered to be in the hands of the alleged kuffar, i.e. non-believers, and consequently are fair game for attack, despoliation, rape, and subjugation to Islam. In reality, there is no secular war in Muhammadan Islam, because from the very beginning of the Muhammadan Islamic polity, War and aggression were the means by which Muhammad and his followers built up their empire. Jihad became a perpetual holy duty of warring against all infidels. That is a continuous war of aggression against all those who do not believe as they do in Allah and his messenger Muhammad. These wars were not in defense of Islam, but to gain territory, economic wealth, slavery, booty, rape, and plunder. Converting these peoples to Islam was lost on the agenda of Muhammad's followers, but became a very important byproduct of these wars of aggression. 
It is a cruel irony, if not actually divine justice, that among the largest victims of jihadi terror were and continue to be other Muslims. Each side of the conflict between two or more of the warring Muslim factions or sects accuse their opponents of kufr and or unbelief, turning them into enemies of Allah and hence subject to divinely sanctioned destruction. In this manner, and according to the Quran, their holy book, since all are Muslims killing other Muslims, none will ever be received in paradise, but will assuredly up, end up in Allah's hell. For the listeners who doubt all the above, the following very few sample verses and hadiths should easily and conclusively sober them up. Chapter 9, verse 5. But when the forbidden months are past, then fight and slay, faqatilu. The, pala the pagans, wherever you find them, and seize them, beleaguer them, and lie in wait for them in every stratagem of war. Chapter 9, 29. Slaughter, qatilu, those who believe not in Allah, nor the last days, nor hold that forbidden which has been forbidden by Allah and his apostle, nor acknowledge the religion of truth, that is Islam, even if they are of the people of the book, until they pay the jizya with willing submission and feel themselves humiliated. In Sahih al-Bukhari hadith 4.50, narrated by Anas bin Malik, it says, The Prophet said, A single endeavor of fighting in Allah's cause is better than the world and whatever is in it. Sahih Muslim Hadith 4631 and 4626 by Abu Huraira. It goes, it says, I love that I should be killed in Allah's cause, jihad, then I should be brought back to life and be killed again. This was what Muhammad said. Sahih al-Bukhari Hadith 4.73 narrated by Abdullah bin Abi Awfa says, Allah Apostle said, Know that paradise is under the shades of swords. There are hundreds more of similar verses in the Quran and the Hadiths for those who have the appetite for more. We rest our case.